Hey, Gundam fans, welcome to episode 21 of the Gundam Explained podcast. I am your host, Adam Blue, where every week I talk about Gundam because it is so awesome. And there's a lot of reasons for that, and we'll get into that this week as well. And you know what? This almost didn't even happen because as awesome as Gundam is, so is Halo. And yeah, Halo Infinite's out. I've been playing it, and before I knew it, um, we were like getting the kids ready to bed. I was going to be getting to bed. I was like, I just let me finish this uh, part of Halo, and I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't even record the the Gundam Explain episode. So yeah, here we are, and um, I'm glad I'm doing it. I did not want to miss out. But yeah, I've been playing a lot of Halo Infinite, and um, it's pretty good. So I've gotten past the first area where I'm now in the open world area, and I've played enough of it now to where I could compare it to Ghost of Tsushima. I really like Ghost of Tsushima. I liked how they were implementing the open world uh, gameplay loop of what you do in the open world and how they kind of all connect, saving people, uh, unlocking certain bases that then tell you where certain things are to go get, and a lot of fast travel going on. Anyway... Long story short, it's great. They need a open world Gundam game. Think about that. You're a pilot running around, I don't know, uh, in a colony, and uh, you can get different mobile suits. You have hangars you can go to. I don't know. There's so much there. That should be its own discussion, actually. Yeah. Uh, but no, in terms of Gundam stuff, I surprisingly built two Gunpla this week, and that's not something I expected to do, but I just got the itch. You know, thanks to Santo Bell, who's in our Discord. Uh, he told me about the sale of Gundam Breaker on PSN in Singapore, but I can play it on the North American account. And just playing that, the graphics are really good. The gameplay is pretty fun, and it just reminded me of building. So I uh, busted out some sets. You know, again, this is my new camera lens, and it doesn't have the uh, autofocus, but here's the Beyond Global. And I'm actually going to review these. So they will be probably in place of when I do a Robot Spirits review, it'll be of that, and if I don't drop everything, um, that the Origin High Grade, and it is actually amazing. I love, um, I really like the Origin. Now, it's funny, because with both of these, I had little accents where I broke things, had to fix them. I'll talk about it in the review. And also, I have a very particular way that I like to do panel lining. I think that, you really, I mean, for me, panel lining is very hit or miss. Most of the time when I see panel lining done, I don't like it. It's too dark. And it. I think if you're going to go dark, you have to then make the, uh, the the rest of the paint and the colors look like you're painting um, the, um, uh, like the anime colors. I don't know really what I'm trying to say, but when I go in with the panel lining, I, I do it kind of like a black wash you might see on like a high-end action figure or something, so... Um, anyway, I'm going to show off my panel lining technique in a video soon and yeah, do a review of those. And then I want to compare all the, um, 144th scale, uh, RX-72s I have, which I think I have them all except for the one that was, uh, I don't want to say it was called Tokyo base. No, the Gundam base, you know, where they had that, uh, the, it had its own, um, it wasn't actually an RX-78 too, cause it was like a 7800P. I don't know. I so many numbers and on top of crazy names to have to remember all the time. So, um, no, um, another cool thing. And actually let me, I wonder what I should do first. Yeah. Let me first, and then I'll switch back. Um, I just want to talk about what I had filmed recently. Um, so there was the RGM 79 SP GM sniper two from Stardust or not Stardust memory war in the pocket, uh, 0080. And so that review is up, and that's Robot Spirits version. Uh, funny story, I kind of talked about it where I lost a piece to it, and that kind of it has been haunting me. And then I found it when I got my new desk, so uh, that's fantastic. But then I reviewed the fourth episode of War in the Pocket, so check that out. That's when it starts getting real Christmassy. They got, I think, Jingle Bells playing, Camphers walking by a Christmas tree, so it is the season to watch War in the Pocket. Um, and then it just reminds me of how great... The characters are. I mean, it doesn't matter that this is an anime. The the character setup and interaction and the payoff is beyond most any media you watch. And I think that deserves its own video. Because I'm sure, and I want to make a video, I'm going to make a video about everything apparently, but about how anime is or anime, and that needs to be its own video. Please tell me if it's anime or anime. I've always said anime. Um, people just kind of don't... Um, 
like to watch it, uh, Westerners, I, I would say. I, I guess it depends if you're introduced to it when you're young. It's like easy to kind of retain interest in. But if you're not introduced to it to much as you're young when you get older or maybe even, you know, in my age, I, I was never really in, into anime that much. And it, it's it's interesting, though, the stories that are told are things that defy live action film, Western cinema. So and that's it's a whole rant. Um uh, you know, I'm just noticing my hair. Yeah, that was an accident. So I decided to just finish it. <laughs> uh, you know, since COVID, I've been cutting my own hair. And I just get the clippers, have it on too. And zzz, but I forgot to put the thing on. And yeah, but eh, it looks okay. I don't mind it too much. Um, but anyway, yeah. So that's the... Oh, you know what? The other video that's actually funny is that ZZ Top Gundam opening. Yes, I did it. Yes, it is blocked in certain countries because I'm using a song from ZZ Top. But um, I had so much fun in Photoshop making that cover where uh, I took a cover of the album that this song is actually on of ZZ Top. And I even took out the, I think, I forget what it says underneath, Afterburner or something. I don't know. And I took that off and I put Gundam. I took off the little car ship that was on there and I put a top, the top, core top fighter, ZZ Top Gundam opening three and the song matches. It just... I think they were even, the show and the song were made within uh, a year or two of each other. So it just it just works. It really, even though I do think uh, Victory Gundam, uh, the theme song for Victory, one of the theme songs for Victory Gundam really s has that sound. And we'll talk a little bit more about Victory Gundam here in a second. But anyway, that's what's on YouTube, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't. I'm at, what is that, 572 subscribers, so I'm almost at 600. So I'll, ha I'll be doing that giveaway, can't wait. And then obviously, I'll of course have some more things to give away, so there's always chances to get some stuff you know, for me to give back. I, I really appreciate everyone in the comments. Join the Discord if you haven't. I'll show some stuff that's been posted in there. Discord's always fun. Um, yeah, and I think that's it for that, so... Um, yeah, let me get back to something. And again, I'm disappointed with myself. I buy a new lens and I want to not pay too much. So that means no autofocus to show off. And then there's that glare, of course. This, which, yeah, yeah someone mentioned in a comment, it looked like a VHS tape. But this is actually a Super Famicom uh, box, uh, Super Nintendo in Japan, of, you know, a game that was only released in Japan. And that's the uh, Victory Gundam. And, you know, it'd be cool if I was able to, you know, yeah, I can't even, it's going to be blurry. But no, there's uh, shots on it. You can look, look it up on Google. I guess I could, can I? Because I have. But uh, that'll take me time. No, but basically what I want to get to is I have never even played this. I don't even have a Super Famicom. I was just in a local retro store that has games, toys. I've used it quite a bit. I used it uh, a while back when I got back into Star Wars action figures after not buying them since Phantom Menace. Um, and now I have a huge collection. Um, uh, the, the vintage collection specifically, they're the 3.75 inch, really good articulation. I've talked about them in some of my, uh, reviews of the four inch Gundam action figures, but, um, uh, yeah, I would go in there and buy Star Wars figures and then they'd even have Gundam stuff. Actually, my first robot spirits was a gun cannon that they had there and it was just at a really decent price. And I was like, you know what? I want to check out what the robot spirits was about. So I picked it up. But actually, I was there to get some gifts because there's some cool stuff there that can really be only found there. So I wanted to get some gifts for some people. And, uh, while I was there, I was looking in their glass case and I saw this box um, and I was like, you know what? Um, I got to get it. Even if I don't have any, uh, I don't have a Super Famicom, I want to be able to just have it in my collection. I have like an Xbox 360 game. I think it's called Operation Troy. Actually, and here's the... Uh, cartridge of the gun. You see, it almost looks like the Western or American Super Nintendo cartridges, but they made them a little different. But anyway, um, they have the Operation Troy, and sometimes I'll buy, because I like video games, so when it comes to Gundam games, I don't mind getting a physical copy just to kind of keep with uh, my, uh, I know I, you can't see it from here, but some videos, you can see it in my, uh, my little Gundam stash there. I uh, used to have a gigantic physical video game collection and I sold it that worked out for me pretty well actually um, so I don't mind kind of you know here and there grabbing some uh, video games of stuff I really like like I have the 
Star Wars Episode Three Xbox. Uh, I have the Return of the Jedi. Oh, I have all three of the Super Nintendo Super Star Wars games. I have the Return of the Jedi on Game Boy because that was awesome. So I keep some of that stuff around for fun. Um, as I get older, I've tried to slim down on the things I'm just holding on to and collecting, but stuff like that I keep. But no, cool story. So when I was at that store and I was picking up the the Gundam, it was it was already. A, Kind of busy in there. There's a lot of people in there picking up some stuff, and it was really cool. They just got a fresh batch of some 80s toys, some Ghostbusters, Robotech, some other stuff. So someone was going through it at the counter. But when I when it was my turn to check out, I told the guy I wanted to grab that uh, Gundam game. I say, oh, there's a game back there I want to get. He goes, and he's like, which one? I'll go, that one with the thing. It's called Gundam. I didn't think they know. He's like, oh, man, that's awesome. I love Gundam. I was like, oh, cool. And this guy was probably older than me, but he, he was telling me how uh, he got into it back in the the 90s, I think he might have said a roommate of his or something, or a friend of his, um, had him watch all the anime, and he loved it, and, or anime, and um, so we're sitting there just talking about it very briefly, like, and I was just saying how, yeah, I just got into it recently, even though, you know, 2019, it's it's, it's uh, going to be 2022 soon, but still, I think, relatively speaking, I got into it recently, and um. Uh, and then I was telling me yeah, I built a bunch of model kits, but like I've had to slow down because I have so many. And and I don't know if I brought this up on a pre- previous episode, but I got all of the boxes that I had in the attic, tons of boxes of my Gumpla, and uh, broke them all down so I could have just a sta- small stack. It, it, it's relatively small, actually, of the artwork because I love the box art artwork. And I keep all the manuals. I have them in like a, a binder thing. Um. But anyway, we were just talking about the model kits because he's like, oh, oh, you know what? He goes, um, yeah, when, uh, uh, yeah, I still build them. I like to build them here. And they do, in fact, sell the model kits there. Sometimes they just have them in a bag. But lately, I've noticed they've had them in actually a glass case that's like near the back of the store. And they were actually always in good condition. We're like, hmm, is that a robot Spears? Oh, no, it's a model kit. And the guy was telling me he, when the Gundam model kits come in, he sits there and he restores them. So... He says they'll be in pieces, parts will be broken, but he'll sit there. And then he even picked one up and showed me, and I forget what it was. It might have been a wing Gundam, but he picked it up and showed me because he was working on one right there. Um, and I thought that was awesome. So, you know, it was just really cool just when you run into a Gundam fan when you don't expect to, especially me never hearing about Gundam my whole life here in, in Texas, but uh, that it is something that... I mean, it's cool, and then you can share those moments with people about it. So, yeah, cool, cool little story, huh? Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Let's move on here. Um, yeah, real quick, I want to talk about just real quick. Uh, nothing too crazy, video game related has been going on. There's been some new stuff in GBO2. Obviously, they had the free days, uh, but that already passed. And Gundam Breaker. I've been playing a lot more of that. Actually, that that's pretty fun. And then. Uh, what was the other, uh, you know, there's that UC Engage Mobile, but to be honest, without the English, and maybe I'm just, uh, there's something wrong with me about it, but it's just really hard for me to get engaged, because really there's a lot of menus and systems, and so it's like I want to be able to read what I'm doing, and I was translating for a bit, but it's so cumbersome, and with, you know, full-time job, family, uh, sometimes it's just, it's hard to add additional things to spend time on, um, especially when I almost forgot this podcast, <laughs> scary um but yeah that is that let me know any gundam related video games you guys have been playing recently if not in the comments jump in the discord there's even a video game channel in there so and i've noticed actually there's been uh, more people joining the discord recently which is really awesome and really don't be shy to say whatever you want post any picture i'm actually going to go through uh some here uh, here shortly because there's always cool gundam related things um that i won't i wouldn't see if people weren't sharing them so you know, real quick, um, I didn't get any news prepared, so what I'm going to do is just quickly scroll through the Reddit and see what's what. Uh, I saw this one, uh, Gumpla made me hate stickers. Um, you know, I think this is funny because we're seeing, that's like Gollum, I'm not a Lord of the Rings guy, and I'm not even going to get started, okay? Gundam, it's its own thing, I'm not going to get started with Lord of the Rings, but I like how it it, it has this you know, shot, a screenshot from... I'm sure it's like a Build Fighters or some show of them putting the sticker on the head. And I, I just did that um, yeah, this week with the two RX-78 twos. And 
it's just funny to see that and get that feeling. Yeah, because you want to get it on right. Like, I can't, I can't have it not on right. Like, if it's just off just a little bit, I can tell, and it throws the whole thing off, and I'll redo it. Uh, so, um, yeah, very cool. Um, okay, the greatest GM ever made, RGM seventy nine N GM Custom. Well, I gotta say, that is a sick one. I mean, in fact, I was finally able to secure a Robot Spirits version. Should be coming in soon, so. Oh, and speaking of Victory Gundam, why does he wear a mask? Wrong answers only. Oh, that's always funny. Let's see. Uh, Space COVID. Okay, that wins. That wins. Um, yeah, the bad guy in uh, Victory Gundam. That's been a running theme of this episode so far, and... Um, and that's making me want to watch it again. So uh, someone pointed out, ah, I forget who it was, and we'll look at it in a second, in the Discord about Rice of Anime having sale on the Gundam Blu-rays. I don't know if it's still going on, but the prices are pretty good. And I have most of them anyway, but I still need to get a few. Some of them are Victory Gundam. Now, they, the Victory Gundam Blu-rays are on sale, but they're not on the deep sale that some of them have. And, and I really want to get to it because I do want to cover it for the, for the channel be and it would be cool to revisit it because it was one of the first Gundam series I watched when I first got into Gundam. And I loved it from the first episode to the last. I don't know what it was that not having background information in Gundam, I totally enjoyed it. And I guess because a lot of it, it's so much further in the future of the UC timeline. It doesn't really talk about story elements of old characters. It's more of, I always saw it as a neat kind of post-apocalyptic um Earth setting after there's been a technological future, you know, with space colonies and mobile suits. So I, it was just a cool story in that regard in the setting. And yeah, they had those weird vehicles and machines that were just that giant tires or whatever, but um, it didn't bother me too much. You know, I really like it. And then after watching you know, F91 and then um, G Savior, I can like see the connective tissue between them. So, so yeah, pretty cool there. And yeah, I guess the camera shaking some, that's going to happen sometimes until I figure out what to do about that. If any of you maybe gadget filming streaming geniuses out there know what to do, it's basically I got a standing desk. I have it in standing mode. This makes me a little more active. And then I have the thing on a tripod and there's weight to it. And then so like, yeah, there's, there's shakiness. It's not too bad, but it bothers me when I try to make things look as cool as possible. All right. Um, what else is going on? Oh, let's see the Free Jager White Rider. So that's from the um, Code Fairy game. Look at that. Oh, I love this. I love this picture. I've seen this around a lot. AMX or for Cubeblade, but it's the Pope with his uh, shoulder uh, uh, binders. <laughs> Uh, kind of sticking up, and then you see like the crosses as if they're the um, funnels. That's uh, it's pretty funny. You know, no offense to anyone, it's just a good little laugh. Um, um, anything else that? Uh, oh, just a cool shot. Hopefully, this doesn't get my uh, video mixed. But it's from Unicorn. Really, just cool, awesome battle. Um, I like it when people post that, and it reminds me of stuff. And what? Now, did I mention that I watched an episode of G Gundam, the first episode? I think that's what this is from, right? Because they, um, unless this is a joke, but I know they do it based off of countries and stuff. Um, I watched the first episode, and it was entertaining, even though in the sense of why I like Gundam, it wasn't, but... Just as a cool little show, and the fact that I can stomach anime now, uh, yeah, it was pretty interesting. Um, anything else to cover here? Um, no, I think that's that's about it. Cool stuff on Reddit sometimes. I think it's been slow just because of the uh, the time of year that's going on. So yeah, let's. Let's move on. Actually, let's just jump into the mobile suit of the week, and that's going to be the LM312V04 Victory Gundam. So, um, the 
Uh, Victory Gundam, aka V1, is the titular mobile suit of Mobile Suit Victory Gundam, most prominently piloted by Uso Ewan. Ewan. Now, I'm trying to think of how I remember hearing that pronounced, but it's been a while. I'm going to say Ewan right now. Until he acquired its success for the, L- the LM3... Oh, did I say LMS earlier? It's the LM3 14V21 Victory 2 Gundam. And... Matter of fact, I have the Robot Spirits version of of this one. It's just a little older. Uh, it can use an update. So take a look at it. I love this design. Like, I think this is one of the least talked about, but coolest designs, especially when it has the um, real markings. There's just something about it. It just reminds me of like a performance car even though i'm not really into cars still it just it has that look like i don't know there's just something about this it just totally looks cool all right a limited production mobile suit the victory gundam has a core block system in which the suit's body is consisted of a core fighter attached to the suit's upper and lower body this modular design increases the chances of pilot survivability and also uh, allows damaged parts to be quickly and easily swapped out in the middle of battle um, yeah, that kind of goes back to the original Gundam, how it had that feature. Even, yeah, the Zeta and Double Zeta, I think it's like once we got to the new Gundam, Unicorn, yeah, they stopped kind of doing that core block system, but it's always been pretty common. Uh, yeah, F-91 didn't have it either. So, yeah, that's that's very interesting. Um, the core fighter can also combine only with the upper body, also known as the as top limb informally dubbed the hanger, or the lower body, also known as the bottom limb, informally dubbed the boots, and transform into the top fighter and the bottom fighter, respectively. When there is a need to travel quickly, it is possible for the victory for the entire Victory Gundam to transform into a fighter-like mode. So um, let me just put on some DLC here. The Victory Gundam is also equipped with the Minofsky Flight System, a simplified Minofsky craft system designed to keep the mobile suit hovering in midair at any altitude, allowing it to dedicate all thrust from its rockets and verniers to, man- to maneuvering. As a result, the Victory Gundam has unprecedented mobility in Earth's atmosphere, even in mobile suit mode. So that's very cool because of how advanced it is with the Minofsky Flight System and everything. It kind of it, it, the I guess the issue with the earlier Gundams it was really hard to be in Earth's atmosphere, and they would develop mobile suits for you know different uh, things but the uh, the victory gunham ha- had uh, capabilities in the earth atmosphere yeah and in some background first seen in 0153 UC so that really is far in the future and they manufacture league militaire so that's also very interesting we're not seeing um, Anaheim electronics or SNRI even though there's some similarities so I'm sure there are some cross-generational similarities, I guess, in, in development. And that'd be kind of cool to get into at some point. In fact, let's look at that. Um, League Militaire is an organization uh, poised to defend the Earth here from the invasion of the Zanskar Empire. So this is specifically because of the Zanskar Empire and like the AUG. Many of its members are ex-Federation officers. Um, the military is sp- Sponsored by Anaheim Electronics and is generally of the same ragtag structure. Okay. Um, okay, so I guess there is some similarity. I guess the I, I kind of see now. I'm glad they brought up the AU. It kind of makes sense then in that way. So um so Anaheim and Earth Federation are still around, but they're they're kind of their own thing. So very cool. All right, well. Armament. So Vulcan gun, a, a pair uh, of head-mounted 25mm revolver cannons served as the Victory Gunham's Vulcan guns. They have a lower rate of fire and less ammunition than the 60mm Vulcans, commonly used by mobile suits decades ago. Which are too large for a miniature mobile suit, however, the high accuracy of the Victory Gunham's fire control system compensate for these shortcomings. Interesting. Okay, so it's got high accuracy, despite them... Um, being uh, like a smaller caliber. So, uh, beam rifle, a standard hand-carried ranged beam weapon is the beam rifle, which fires concentrated mega particles that can damage any ordinary armor not specifically treated to resist it. It can be mounted on any of the Gundam's hard points, allowing more than one rifle to be carried into battle if required. 
beam pistol. The Victory Gundam's beam rifle is modular with a small beam pistol serving as its core. Parts of the beam rifle can be purged to reveal it, this beam pistol while boasting a rep firing rate. The beam pistol is only effective at close range. Makes sense. Beam Saber. The Beam Saber is a small device held in the mobile suit's hands when deployed and is powered by a rechargeable energy capacitor. It emits high-energy Minofsky particles to form a blade-shaped eye field via manipulation of electromagnetic fields, and then fills this eye field shell with superheated Minofsky particle uh, plasma to produce an effective cutting blade. I love how they try to explain that science. Additionally, a large beam field capable of destroying several Sinope-class battleships can be generated when the beam from one of the Victory Gundam's beam sabers combined with the beam spread out from the beam trident's emitters. It is also possible to cross the beams from two of Victory Gundam's beam sabers and then throw the conjoined uh, sabers as a spinning weapon. That's a spinning beam weapon, and that's awesome. The Victory Gundam has four beam sabers stored in forearm storage racks. I wonder if that's how they got the idea for the Inquisitors and Rebels. You know what I mean? Beam Shield. By generating a plane of energy similar to the blade of a beam saber, the beam shield can block both beam and projectile weapons. The size of the beam shield can be adjusted freely according to the output and can expand to a maximum size of 150 meters to 200 meters in a short period of time to defend warships. The beam shield can be disabled if its generator is damaged. The Victory Gundam is equipped with two beam shields, one sword in each forearm, and their generators can pivot approximately 180 degrees on uh, the vertical axis. The beam shields are also operable when the top fighter is operating independently. Beam trident, a triple beam saber with a long pole handle. The long handle can be folded, can be folded and stored in, on one of the mobile suits. Hard points, a large beam field capable of destroying several Sinope class battleships can be generated when the beam spread out from the beam trident's emitters is combined with another beam from a beam saber. That's a lot of beam combining. Didn't, um... Ghostbusters say not to cross the streams, and I'm sure that's similar. No, one's eye field, one's plasma. I don't know. I'm I'm comparing two made up uh, science movie stuff. Uh, beam bazooka. A beam bazooka utilizes the same technology as a beam rifle, just on a larger scale, because it produces a large a larger beam. Beam bazooka deals more damage than a beam rifle. The victory utilizes the same beam bazooka as the gun EZ. Another great suit, actually. Uh, quadruple missile pod, an optional missile pod loaded with four missiles that can be attached to the hard points on the legs uh, and side skirt armor. Gatling gun, an optional weapon developed for the Victory Gun, also known as Beam Gatling Gun. This large handheld weapon has a revolving five-barrel structure and a high rate of fire. This is the same weapon uh, as used by Uso's hijacked ZMT S12G Shoku. Disposable bazooka, disposable single shot bazooka, a single disposable bazooka can be mounted on a hard point or a pair can be mounted in parallel on an attachment unit and then mounted on the hard point. So special equipment and features. So the core block system for one, and then hard points, which kind of got incorporated into action figures and they're even called hard points. An attachment point for weapon shields, spare ammunition or optional mission specific equipment. Hard points can be also used to store carried weapons when mobile suits need when a, a mobile suit needs its manipulators for further purposes, the Victory Gundam is equipped with eight hard points, four located on arms and mobile suit mode on a and on main body of top fighter, two located on the side armor in mobile suit mode and on the main body of top fighter, two located on the legs in mobile suit mode and on the main body of bottom fighter. Needed some images to go with that because that lost me. Minofsky Flight System. The Minofsky Flight System is a mobile suit uh, size propulsion system developed from the Minofsky Craft System. Powered purely by the mobile suit's reactor, the flight system allows a mobile suit to hover in midair, essentially ignoring the effects of gravity to a degree. This allows the mobile suit to maintain greater fuel efficiency as a fuel, as all fuel is directed to maneuvering. So that's pretty cool how, you know, they discuss the Minofsky craft system and it's kind of similar to like all this ufo talk going on how these objects unidentified flying objects are defying gravity um, and that could be that um element 115 or whatever that they're calling it uh or uh, a minofsky flight system so yeah there we go Okay, so a little history. By the late UC, the Federation faces a severe economic crisis that cripples its military, leading to the creation of the Underground Resistance Organization known as the League Militaire. 
In UC-0153, the League Militaire launched its Victory Project from their Colon factory near Eastern Europe's Point Casarelia. Its main objective being to design and mass-produce advanced new mobile suits to counter the Zanskar Empire threat that had spread through the Earth sphere. Named after the legendary Federation mobile suits of the past, the flagship mobile suit was dubbed the LM312V04 Victory Gundam and served as a symbol of freedom for the League military forces. The Victory Gun design would also serve as the basis for the cheaper, non-transformable, mass-produced gun EZ, which is an excellent mobile suit. So a couple things here. The core fighter looks great. The head peeking out with the v fin's a little silly, but if you ignore it and look at it for just what it is, it's pretty awesome. Um, and then top limb, top fighter, bottom limb, bottom fighter. So there's some pretty interesting configurations, and I actually don't have... Let's see, I've got... You know what? I have the V-Dash Master Grade. Um... Burka. I don't know if it does transforming. I don't even want to attempt it. That thing's like a hand grenade. And then the robot spirits, you know, doesn't also. Oh, but I love it. See the the Verka? There's just something about it. And that's like tiny on there. You need a magnifying glass. Pistol. All right, kind of showing off. It's, so there's a lot of good pictures here actually to show how it operated and how it was used. You know, I really like it. I can't wait to really jump into the series. I don't see it talked about too much except just making fun of scenes where the girls were in bikinis with bazookas flying around which i mean really that's a great tactic if you're gonna um trick someone okay and this was in um let's see this said crossbone so that's pretty interesting um anything else that oh yeah there's that one i've got yeah, 2011, so that's an older one. So, And if you, even if you see some of my recent reviews, and I think the one that's going to be going up next Monday, too, is in contrast to the video that just went up. They're both 0080 units, but one's a more newer one, one's an older one. You can kind of tell the difference between the ages of the robot spirits. So this definitely needs an upgrade, although the new F91 robot spirits was made a little larger and a little cheaper. Ah, it's, it's interesting stuff. All right, now I've realized the trivia doesn't really always have anything interesting. So anyway, there's that. The mobile suit of the week is the Victory Gundam. Let me know what you guys think about it. I like the show. I like the design of the mobile suit. I think it's a little, I don't know if the term is underrated, but it's just um, not talked about as much as like Stardust Memory, for instance, is talked or... Um, uh, Oh, wait, the MS team. So, Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, so Will posted this. This is fake, but it's awesome. New Salvatore Gundam. And look at Amaro with that Xeon stuff on. And then we see this uh, Sazabi uh, Overlord. And it's Ishar and uh, Fetty gear but these look great it, it is very interesting the sazabi takes a lot from the uh what the um gpo2 um yeah and i i don't know there's just something about these that that would be great if they were real awesome picture um let's see oh and then santo bell posted them. this is over on gundam um I don't, well, I don't know what that means. The, f the first pick is it. This is the Overon. Overon Gundam? Uh, the first pick is up armor, and the second is the Gundam underneath. So that is sick, if you think about it. You know, what's interesting it says this is a UCMS built by Paptimus Sirocco. So remember him from Zeta, you know, Jupitris. The, 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 there's the O, and that kind of has some of the look of it um piloted by someone called mashiro oaks which if i read the manga right is his son maybe very cool and it's a parting gift the story takes place in 0089 so let's just take a look at and it, this is kind of a smaller picture but that's very cool looking and then the gundam underneath like that 
that's just awesome. So thanks for sharing that. And then Santo Bell is showing the officially announced now, but sadly, P. Bandai. I mean, look at that. You know, it's very interesting. You can see where the panel lining had the kind of the bleed there, but they also must do some digital work on this. And I'm sure they're they're custom painting it, but even sometimes when you look at the panel lining, like even on the feet, it's not that good, but this just looks good. I know I'm getting nitpicky, but I kind of do that. Now, this looks great. It's got that kind of matte finish. Yeah, that camera's shaking. It's got that matte finish that either they put it on or maybe the plastic looks like that. I don't know, but it looks great. Love it. Very well done. Very well done. Ooh, and look at this one. That crown. That crown is, is crazy. Like, these seem like too crazy of mobile suits, especially Gundam-like mobile suits, to appear during the time in which they supposedly appear. But, I mean, it's the end of the one-year war. They could have went as crazy as possible it before... You know, the reconstruction, maybe, of the design groups between Anaheim and Zionic. So, I think there's a way we can make it canon. Um, yeah, there's that. I don't know if there's anything. Um, you know what? Uh, there's some stuff in the fan fiction that's been posted. So, check that out. There's some pretty cool stuff in there. And then, that might be it. Yeah, that was that. So... Let's jump into comments. Let's see. Um, yeah, from, let's see. Now, six days ago. Yeah, this is the, does the concept art matter? And uh, Jaeger Bomb, Jaeger Bomb, Jaeger Bomb. Two, I'm skeptical. I don't trust Netflix at all. Cowboy Bebop and Death Note. Need I say more? And yeah. Um, you know what? I liked Cowboy Bebop, but I never saw the anime, so or anime, so that could be something. Never even bothered with Death Note, you know, because I'm not really into a lot of anime stuff, so I don't really watch it when it's in film form. I mean, Ghost in the Shell. I saw the movie with Scarlett Johansson, and I love that movie. Um, but I think because of the director and legendaries behind it, I. They're going to make sure it's quality, and even Netflix has recently said they're going to focus more on less films that are higher quality. So that's another good sign. Um, they really did say that, too. They're, um, Netflix, oh my gosh, I can't spell Netflix, less films, more quality. I mean, let's see if you just search that. Um, no, now they're really just talking about, oh, unless they hit a news. Yeah, Netflix turns its attention to films it hopes everyone wants to see, although that sounds bad to everyone, so that means they're going to make it for a mass audience. But no, I really think it's about, yeah, about the overall quality. Yeah, they really want that quality up, and I think that could be done with Gundam. So, Robert with finally able to snipe the first comment. That's uh, that's nice. Oh, you're welcome for the moon. Yeah, he's the one that got me the the moon Gundam, and I can't wait to build that. I just don't feel like I should yet because it's really kind of a Christmas thing. So I'll either do that um around Christmas, do a video or something. Um, let's see. Yeah, Robert always got his commentary. So if you're ever interested, um, it's in the comments. Very cool. Thanks, Robert. Hey, this isn't the band's easy top. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, that's uh, Clown Crown. Yeah, I love this video. The, the stuff like that is so fun to create. And it has 130 views, whereas like my podcast have less views. So these little meme type things are a little funnier. Um, and ZZ Top, I guess, is a relatively popular band. So having that kind of helps, you know, in the title. Um, yeah, Robert again. Okay, uh, Santo Bell. Engage is pretty fun to boot. So far, had a blast. You control the special moves and the deployment of the units, then let them loose. The camera can be altered, top right corner. It's 
more about the preparation than the direction control in the game. In matches, you earn items that then upgrade the MS and the pilot. GBO2 draws me in then. I move to other titles, then back again. Same with Breaker 3. Can spend hours making custom MS in that game. Yeah, that's the thing with GBO2. Like, I haven't been playing it lately. But I'll be drawn back into it. Yeah, so it's kind of cool that uh, that's kind of a common thing. Montagne is pronounced Montaigne. Oh, okay. Like the word train without the R and with a short O sound. And her first name is Pass. Well pronounced that way. Pass Montaigne. Or a short O. Is that Montaigne? Montaigne. Congrats on the Moon Gunnum. What a great build, Robert. Nice choice to give, mate. ZZ Top Legs song might be referring to the narrative Gundam. No, but uh, th th that's a funny point. The legs, uh, um, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, it lines up so well. Thanks, yeah, I thought that, well, I'm glad that worked. It was a meme in my head, did not know how it would translate. And sometimes that will happen. Something will just come to me, and it's like, I can make a video of that. So, yeah. Uh, Santo Bell, GM Sniper 2, Classic MS, that just, uh, Oh, I'm sorry, totally Gundam Battle Log. Wow, it fits really well with the 80s anime opening style. Yeah, that is completely 80s. Everything about it. And then sent to a Bell GM Sniper 2 Classic MS, that, the Jesta and the Jagan, followed by the Cold War weather type empowered GM. Yeah, all those are great. GMs are just awesome, especially considering Master Chief. I've said it before and say it again, it was based off of a GM, the Spartan. So. I just I love it. There's that weird connection between Halo and Gundam. Um, ah, Robert again about the comet sniping. <laughs> I don't sleep. It's how I manage it. Ah, that's hilarious. I didn't see that. Robert, uh, oh, about canceling the live stream. Yeah, trying to explain like I, you know, sometimes I get requests to kind of do some live streams, but I. Right now, it's like I film these videos usually on the weekend when I have time or like a Thursday night for the podcast. But outside of that, between work and family, it's really hard for me to add in extra time, especially when I want time for video games. <laughs> uh, good job, Adam. Good job. Thank you. Abraham Lincoln. When I was first getting into Gundam, the GM Sniper 2's color scheme looked too toyish to me and I didn't like it, but it's really grown on me. That happens to a lot of mobile suits and Gundam for me, though. I usually come around to appreciate designs I didn't like at first. And that is that is a well-said comment because I think a and anyone could relate to that. And it's uh, seeing it being said uh, is great because uh, what I replied with is how um, I remember when I first saw the Zaku 2s, you know, and mobile suit Gundam, I was like, these look stupid. So I'm glad their bad guys were killing. But over time, it is that kind of messy or a weird look that they have, you know, they kind of got the dome and the mono eye and the, it just doesn't seem like it would be, it's almost like it's purposely built to look like that. But over time, you kind of understand it, you see the history of the development, and then it just works. Um, HG Co. on the uh, Kasai Gundam Deep Dive the Minofsky flight system reminds me of the GN drive from Gundam 00, especially the fact that in the movie, both the Kazai and the Penelope don't seem to utilize conventional thermonuclear thrusters for propulsion, but instead achieve flight via seemingly anti-gravitic uh, methods. And yeah, that's true. And I didn't see this other one. Speaking of 00, it appears both the Kazai and Penelope possess beam barrier technology similar to an eye field, except it nullifies both projectile and beam weaponry. This is similar to the GN barrier employed by celestial beings machines. Yeah, and I've, you know what, I haven't gotten to double O, but I've heard there's some similarities there, so I'll have to check that out. So I like that the same type of science can be explained, but in different ways, and I think that's kind of cool. It just reminds me of, in you know, quantum physics right now, or in theoretical physics, we have, and have had explanations for how fields work, particle interactions, and then later on we get more of... Uh, understanding of how it works, and it's explained differently, but it's the kind of the concept is there. Uh, very cool detail about Judo's future. Also, thanks for the link to the Lost OVA dub. Oh, yeah, that was on how to watch ZZ Gundam. Yeah, so there's that Lost dub for ZZ Gundam if you want to check out that link, and that's from Niepsch. So, thank you. Um, 
And uh, uh, yeah, that uh, detail about Judo's future, because apparently he still exists further on and helps out people. And that's, that really lends to his character arc that he has in Double Zeta, because he's like a true good guy where uh, I'd say Amaro and Camille almost didn't want to fight. But it, Judo, for some reason, wanted to. And I think it was just because of the situation. His family was gone. He thought he lost his, um, and his family, his mom and dad were gone. They were off somewhere else, just making money, sending. He thought he lost his sister. He had more of this fighting spirit to him. You know, that would be a good, another video to make, comparing Camille, um, Amaro, and Judo. I see the energy sword. You're a man of culture. Oh, yeah, because this picture, which uh, I clicked, didn't I? It's going to ruin everything. Um, yeah, that's the Beyond Global. And in the back, you can see the Master Chief uh, and the Beam Saber. So that's from that 100 Toys Master Chief. Um, very cool. Um, now, th this comment system, the way it works, makes no sense. So let's head back. Comments. Um, oh, so many I haven't responded to yet. I got to get on that. But... Yeah, okay, wasn't too far off. So thanks, Worker. Thanks. I'm. You are a man of culture as well, just for pointing that out. Um, I love it. Okay, uh, Double Lady Warren in the Pocket from Santo Bell. The show does a lot to blur the edges of who's the good and bad guy, really humanizes the show and set up the tragedy and conflict that is to come. Yep. Quote a video, Zaku's are awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that's funny. It, too about how I was just talking about how at first I didn't like the way they looked and I like that um Al thinks Zaku's are awesome yeah, compared to the you know GMs and all the other mobile suits and that's a very interesting part of the that episode anyway Abraham Lincoln is that a VHS no it definitely uh, looked like it oh wow had to look up what a super famicom is it's older than I am <laughs> Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, I guess I really just know what the Super Famicom is because I grew up loving video games. And and in the old school video game magazines I'd look at, I would always see the import section of stuff. And I loved seeing, you know, the those. And then as I got older and then into emulation and seeing where some games only got released in Japan. All right, Robert again. Um, uh, complaining about sniping again. Complaining about the kid. Um... An easy eight. War in the Pocket is my number one Gundam series. Number two is 8th MS Team. I could see that. Easy eight. Hmm. Uh, wow, I guess you got a VHS cassette player if you have that. Am I right? And no. But I don't even have a Super Famicom, but I still have it. Yeah, it's just kind of to, to collect. Um, by the way, Great Granddaddy Gundam Adam looks terrific. Well, thanks, Robert. Yeah, that's from that pick. Yeah, I kind of like using the... Um, uh, that new community feature where I can kind of post things, and I gotta go back to these comments later and, and like them, and, and I've got this, like, purple light I like to use. Looks like a little too much on that picture, but it kind of adds some detail. You know, I used to do a lot more photography and videography and stuff, so I kind of like adding that stuff in, but... But you know what? That does it. That's the end of episode 21 of the Gunnam Explained podcast. I hope everyone enjoyed it. If not, let me know why in the comments below. If anything I need to add or change up or something that's boring about it. I mean, really, I'm reading off of a, a Gundampedia wiki Gundam page. Is that even interesting? I do it because it helps me because I want to read that stuff anyway. I figure I'd just read it to everybody and we kind of talk about it. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think. I always like the the um, comments that are made anyway, even if it's suggestions on how to make the channel better. Um, and then, yeah, join the Discord as well. Um, a lot, you saw the stuff, the conversation going on, it's a lot of fun, fan fiction, news of uh, Gundam and Gunpla and stuff like that. And actually, there was some more stuff I was going to share. I'll do it next time because I think we're at that time. Um, yeah, there's more stuff that was shared and I totally forgot to share that Uh but um, I'll definitely do that because I love the stuff that shows up in there. Like memes, too. Yeah, totally. I got I to gotta get that little script up right in front of me where I'm uh, making sure I'm touching on everything I need to. There's just a lot sometimes. So anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, it, before we leave, also, there's that giveaway that's going on. So if you haven't um, 
entered the giveaway, there's a video in the description. And there's always going to be a giveaway going on. And this one's actually about to end. So, um, well, thanks for watching. And we'll talk later.